The Five Nights at Freddy's series has branched off into so many wild directions over the years that it's a little hard to believe it all started with a very simple sit and survive game about checking cameras and closing doors. For years, people have been trying to unravel the mysteries of the purple guy, remnant, rogue AI, and well, whatever the hell is going on here. But after all these years, I have never seen anyone answer the core mystery at the very heart of this first game. The question that has plagued every player's mind when they took the time to look a little deeper and think just a little bit harder about this eerie setting. Shouldn't the doors close when I run out of power? I mean, like, that's, that's totally how electric doors work, right? They need power to stay open, and if they run out, then they slam shut, right? Well, I say this question has gone unanswered for long enough. Is this simply another crazy and stupid engineering decision from a company famous for it? Or is it a design so geniusly subtle that it's been overlooked for nearly a decade? Spoilers, but uh, judging from my past deep dives into the engineering of this series, it's uh, it's probably that first one. If it's, if it's that second one, if it's actually smart, then I will literally eat my words. But this is the Five Nights at Freddy's Doors Explained. Richard, hit that intro. First, let's recap how these doors work in the games in case any of you have forgotten. I mean, this first game did come out nine, nine years? The gameplay loop of the first Five Nights at Freddy's is incredibly simple. All you do is sit in a room and try not to get killed by the cast of Banjo-Kazooie if they were strangers in Times Square aggressively trying to take a picture with you. You can check the security cameras to keep tabs on the four animatronics, you can turn on the lights in the hallway to see if anyone's about to drop kick you from the shadows, and you can close the doors when Freddy and the gang get a little too close for comfort. However, doing any of these things will slowly drain your battery, and if it runs out, then you can't check the cameras, you can't turn on the lights, and you can't close the doors. All you can do is sit and wait for one of those things to bring you your pizza. And by pizza, I mean death. All right, so the first question we need to answer, what's up with this battery thing? I mean, I'm no expert, but last time I checked, most restaurants don't run on double A's. Well, I think in this case, there's actually a pretty clear answer. If you take a moment to stop peeing your pants and look a little more carefully at the restaurant through the cameras, you'll see that it's not in the best condition. It's dirty, it's run down, the animatronics are in disrepair. In short, it's pretty clear that this building is not in full operation. It's been closed for a while. And if it's been closed, then there's a good chance that they've not been keeping up with the electric bill and they're running it off of some sort of generator and not a very good one at that. So it's not literally powered by batteries. You couldn't raid this building when your Wii remote dies. It's, I mean, it's just a generic sort of symbol for power. So that's why we have such limited power to begin with, but that doesn't explain why these doors drain it so dang fast. So I guess the first question we need to answer is why most real life electric doors drain power when they're kept open. I think the first thing that comes to people's minds when they see an electric door like this is the doors on your car. Most people will know that if, hypothetically, your assistant Richard is an idiot who leaves the doors to your car open in your garage all night, then when you come out in the morning, it's gonna be dead and you have to ask your annoying neighbor Fred to jump it for you. <sighs> calm down, calm down, calm down. It's not worth it, it's not worth it. This leads most people to assume that keeping an electric door open like this will drain power. Uh, however, that's not exactly the full picture here. 
It's not really the act of keeping the door open that drains the power. Your car just automatically turns on all the interior lights whenever the door is open so that you could see. And that is what drains the power. Obviously, this isn't the case for FNAF. We see no lights or anything that are tied to the opening and closing of the door. So it seems like FNAF might just be off the hook for this one. <laughs> just kidding! It's never off the hook! It's on two hooks! The FNAF doors don't swing open like a regular door. Instead, they slide up and down, more akin to a garage door, only way more inefficient because it's just a big slab of metal for... reasons? In order to open the door, you need to raise it up. Since gravity will constantly be trying to pull the door back down, you need to constantly be putting energy into the system to keep it open. I mean, or you might have some sort of mechanical stop at the top that's propping the door open, but at the very least, the act of opening the door should drain power. But if you want to keep it closed, you could just, I mean, just let gravity do its thing. That sounds like the easiest way to do it for me, but... <laughs> I mean, silly me, I should have known. Fazbear Entertainment is never one to do things the easy way. Or in a way that makes any sort of logical or financial sense. They're not good at this. No, it's clear that for whatever reason, Fazbear Entertainment went out of their way to design these doors so that they will remain fully open when disconnected from power and require a constant input of energy to be kept closed. And no matter how stupid or illogical or needlessly reckless that reason will inevitably be, I intend to find it and I intend to fix it. I will not eat my words today. Okay, so just to get out of the way, the real answer to this question is just game design. If the doors closed when you ran out of power, then you could just keep them shut and you would just win. Now, call me crazy, but I have a feeling that a game like that might not have been quite as popular. Oh, what's going on, my crazy crustaceans? It's your boy, LobsterBoy427, back with another Let's Play. Today, we're playing a crazy new game called Five Nights at Freddy's. I'm hyped, I hope you're hyped. Let's jump into it. All right, all right, we got a little bit of a, little bit of a spooky atmosphere here. And ladies and gentlemen, that was Five Nights at Freddy's. If you enjoyed, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll pinch you all later. Ha! So, within the world of Five Nights at Freddy's, can we find a logical explanation for this design? Well, based on what I found, a lot of people chalk this door thing up to a safety feature. <laughs> For the company that the company that did the, the spring lock suits, those guys saved it. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. As the argument goes, the reason these doors are designed to remain open when the power goes out is because if it were the other way around and the power went out, then you'd just be stuck in there. Sure, when you've got your good pal Freddy on his way to dive straight at your face, then this might not seem too bad. Better to be stuck inside alone than stuck outside with the killer robots. But what happens when six o'clock rolls around and you wanna leave? Even when the building was in full operation and not running off of a very limited generator like it is in the games, it'd be a real risk that in the event of a power outage or something, the security guard could get totally trapped inside. Whoa. You know what? I've had enough of cowering behind these poorly designed doors. I say we go out there and we show these animatronics who they're messing with. Here, here, here. Why don't we practice on that subscribe button below this video? You know what? Next time I see Bonnie, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give him a taste of my uppercut. Next time Chica decides to stick her beak where it doesn't belong, maybe I'll, maybe I'll give her a nice solid move line. Heck, you know what? I think for Foxy, a simple single click or tap would be enough to take it down. I mean, go on, go on. Give it a shot. Give it a shot right there. And if I ever see Freddy's smug little smile again, I'm gonna give him a one-way ticket to Suplex City, just like this. Mm. 
So this theory would suggest that they designed these doors to pop open in the case of a power outage to ensure that nobody gets trapped inside the security office. There are a couple of ways you could accomplish something like this. One would be to attach a cable to the top of the door, wrap that cable around some pulleys, and attach a big counterweight to the other side that's heavier than the door, which could probably be housed in this empty space that we see on the map of the building. Pressing the button on the door would pull the door down and the counterweight up, you'd use power to keep it held in place, and then when you turn the power off, the counterweight would drop, pulling the door back open. That way, so long as the cable is attached, nobody could ever get trapped in the room. Problem solved. Based on what we can see of the door and the pizzeria layout, it seems like this is the most likely answer to me. But funnily enough, there's actually a real life solution to this same problem that works a little bit differently. It's called a door. I know it's a bit of a novel concept, but a door is actually not dependent on power at all. If the power went out, you could just turn this knob here, kind of off frame, and stick with me. You could just open the door and calmly exit the room. You could also, I mean, I don't know, like prop a chair up against it or something if a possessed robot is trying to kill you. It's a win-win! Like, seriously, Fazbear? It's not that complicated. You just spent a ton of time and clearly a ton of money designing a door to solve a problem that doesn't exist. Like, I appreciate the effort. You identified a possible emergency scenario of a power outage and you've designed a way to allow your security guard to exit the building safely in the event of that emergency. But you could have accomplished the same exact thing the way every building ever has with just a plank of wood and some hinges. I mean, it's not like, it's like a power outage is that serious of a thing anyway. It's not like everyone needs to evacuate the building immediately and if the security guard just takes one moment to open a door, then they're gonna die. No, no, they're gonna be fine. I... Unless... Unless a power outage is not the thing they were preparing for. Oh God, think about it. Freddy's is first and foremost, a restaurant. Their main concern from a safety perspective wouldn't be power outages or security guards that they probably didn't need to hire getting stuck in the back rooms. Nana, nah. allow me to introduce to you all automatic fire doors. Doors that are designed to automatically open in the case of a fire alarm being triggered are absolutely a real thing that exists in tons of modern buildings. Think about it. If you're running from an active fire, the last thing you want is to be caught in a bottleneck as people have to stop to open a door. Having all the doors automatically pop open can also help dissipate smoke so you're less likely to suffocate in an enclosed space. Obviously, the systems that run these doors can't be power dependent because a fire could easily damage the electrical systems of a building if the power hasn't already been shut off manually. So having a failsafe where if the power goes out, all of the fire doors automatically pop open is actually a pretty good safety consideration. The fire door explanation makes even more sense when you start to look at the layout of the FNAF 1 building specifically. These doors are on either side of the security office. Since you probably don't want patrons of the restaurant being able to walk in here whenever they want, these doors are probably kept locked most of the time. However, if we look at the map, we can see that the security office has an exterior wall, meaning that in all likelihood, there's probably a window right behind you. I mean, kind of ruins the feeling of being trapped with no possible escape in the games, but I mean, in the event of a fire, that window could be someone's only way out. If the door to that room is locked though, then they're out of luck. Even if Freddy's is a part of some larger building and the security office doesn't have a window, there's just more building on that side, the fact that it has a door on both sides effectively makes it a hallway. If someone is standing in this back corner and a fire broke out in the kitchen, spreading to cover 
this doorway here, then that person needs to be able to run through the security office to get out on the other side. And again, they can't do that if the doors are locked. In order to ensure that everyone can get out safely in the event of an emergency, these doors, and these doors specifically, need to be able to automatically unlock and pop open. Granted, yes, most real-life fire doors open and close like regular doors and not like blast doors from Star Wars or whatever is going on here, but I think there might be an explanation for that as well. Typically, you want a door to open into a room, not into the hallway, so that way someone can't like accidentally leave something in front of the door in the hallway and then you're just stuck in there. However, the security office is pretty small. Maybe there wasn't enough room to have doors swing in on both sides. Maybe they were worried that like the doors would hit someone who was inside and injure them if they automatically popped open or they would like obstruct the window on the back wall, defeating the whole purpose. Look, I'll admit it's not a great solution. I mean, just don't design the room to be so small to begin with, but it's like, they're, they're doing, they're putting the effort, they're kind of doing all right. I mean, no, it's still, it's still not great, but they're trying. In an ironic twist, and in what is definitely a first on my FNAF videos, don't let the comments tell you otherwise, I think I was wrong. These doors are not another idiotic engineering decision in a very long list of idiotic engineering decisions on the part of Fazbear Entertainment. No, they were designed that way First and foremost, to try to keep you safe in the event of a fire or other emergency. Now, granted, they didn't account for the emergency situation of the animatronics getting possessed by the vengeful children who got serial killed by the owner of the restaurant, which, I mean, fair enough. It would seem, though, that this time around, at least, I am forced to eat my words at... What? What? No, Richard, I'm not going to... Eat my words. What does that even mean? It, eat my, it's a figure of speech. It just means I'm going to admit I was wrong. I, yeah, I know I said I would literally eat my words in the beginning, but like I'm Gen Z. Literally doesn't mean literally anymore. I, you know what? You know what? You know what? Fine. Fine. You know what? Give it to me. Give it to me. Right there. Yep. This is on you. All right. I want you to watch this, Richard. That You did this. Fazbear Entertainment, you may have gotten off the hook this time. But mark my words, I will not rest until I've exposed each and every one of your terrible design decisions. I'm always on the hunt for safety violations. I always manage to sniff out substandard designs, no matter how well you think you've hidden them. I always find the truth. I always come back. It's not you. You did this.